Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? So my name is Tisha Spencer on Facebook. You might know me as Tisha Lady, and I'm here to talk about travel joy. Now, I have been using travel joy for about three and a half, four years right now. And one of the reasons why I started using travel joy was because I needed something to organize my trips, to organize my, um, my clients and so much more. I actually found out about it going to a travel convention down in Mexico. Now, one of the things I loved about Travel Joy was the pure fact that it allowed me to get very organized, collect all of my contacts and everything in one place. Now, as you're watching this, definitely put down into the comments whether you are an, an travel agent now, if you're looking to become a travel agent and where you're located. Now, what I wanted to talk about today was how I go about actually starting a trip request. Now, what happens is, is that people will go ahead and contact me for a trip and I send out a specific form. Now I was talking to some agents a few days ago and I was asking them, how do they you know, do their trip requests? How do they keep up with their information? One girl said that all of her contacts are literally inside of her cell phone. I said, so does you have, do you have all of their information, You know, um, where they live, so not social security, um, credit card information, um, addresses, prefer travel preferences, birthdays, weddings in your phone. And she was like, well, no. I was like, well, you know, Travel Joy will have all that information for you. One of the things I find that most agents tend to do is that they get excited when somebody comes to them via social media or a phone call to book a trip. But what ends up happening is the fact that even though they are excited, one of the problems that they have is the fact that they don't know what they're doing. Not like they don't know what they're doing as work-wise, but they're all over the place. So when they do start doing the trip bookings and stuff like that, they got to keep going back to the cell phone, keep going back to the email, keep searching for all the information. So I was like, well, you know what? You really should use Travel Joy. But she was like, I don't really know how to use Travel Joy. I've never really used Travel Joy before. And I'm not exactly sure how it works. And I keep getting lost. So basically, she was the inspiration for doing this. So what I'm going to show you in this training is basically how to do a trip request form. I send my trip request forms to my clients for them to fill out, especially brand new clients that I don't know their trip preferences. And I have them fill out this information so I can go ahead and start their research. Now, one of the great things about this is the fact that until I get this form back, I don't do any work because I honestly don't have enough information. What I also like about using Travel Joy for this is the fact that when I do do the work, it actually stays inside of Travel Join, no matter if I'm looking on my cell phone, my laptop, or even using somebody else's computer, I could just log into Travel Joy and see all the information. So today is going to be showing you how to create your trip request form. So guys, what I do is I log into the system and I go in here and they have all the different things where you can like see all the stuff that's going on. I go to, I went to templates and I went to forms. Now they have tons of templates and um, confirmations, emails, invoices, signatures, all these different things that you can go ahead and um, already have access to. Now, some of these forms are the ones that I created. Some of the ones are what they have. Now, the ones that say default is the ones that came with the system. So what they have here to start off with is, let's see, it's called client inquiry. That is the basic form that they use for you to go ahead and start the process to get information about the trip. Now you can come in here, you can change the, um, whether you want to add credit card authorization immediately to the, the trip request, or if you have terms and conditions that you can alter, change and add. But basically what they have on here is, now this one is a little bit altered because I have made changes to it, but a lot of it is going to be the same. They're going to have questions for your trips. Where would you like to go? Where would you like to depart? And when would you like to return? Now, my form may look, when I show you the, the form I'm using now, it may seem like it's long, but the whole point is just to get as many questions answered upfront as possible to make my search for them a lot easier. You know, we always ask, are your dates flexible? Because sometimes changing your departure or return date by one day or two days can actually be a better thing because it'll give them a better price. We always need to know the airport code because there are many cities that have multiple airports like D.C., DC, Maryland area, there are three airports that a person can fly out of. New York is the same way. San Antonio is even like that because we can literally fly out of Austin or San Antonio airport. We need to know how many travelers, how many rooms you need. Are there children traveling or what their ages are? Because again, that affects the price. Now here you can alter this. I actually added this one and need to know what their budget is. And I changed the budget numbers around. So you can create this literally to do whatever you want. Now to do this, all I did was I came over here to this side right here and let's use radio group. You just drop it in 
And then what you do is you go in here and you just change it up to fit whatever it is that you want to ask them. And then once you go ahead and done with it, you just go ahead and click the little pencil and boom, you're done. Now, anything you see with this here with the blue, this is basically something that's going to fall inside of their client profile. That way, when you have, when you look at their profile, all this information is already in there. So as they start doing more requests, because honestly, once you have clients that are booking with you consistently, you may not need to have a try a, um, a trip request form filled out every single time that they book because you have a lot of the information and you know what they want, what they don't want and such like that. But when you're dealing with somebody who is brand new or doesn't book a lot, you want to make sure you get all the information together. But don't worry, even if you are taking the information from a client that you know really well. And I have some clients like that. You can still create a whole trip for them and put all the information inside that trip in the notes. So anything with blue is automatically going to go into their client profile. I always add this part, anything you must absolutely do or see, because a lot of times clients will forget about different things that they want to do or specifics that they want for the trip. So this could be the activities. This could be the type of room that they want or a specific room that they want. And then I always ask, was there anything else that you want me to know to build your trip? And this is, again, because they might want to say, um, well, this trip, I'm also going to be traveling with some other people who have already booked and I want our rooms to be connected or anything like that. So basically, a lot of the information that you can put in here to include is client passport information. So yes, you can create and collect all of their passport information and it will go into their their file. This is important for if you're doing a lot of international trips because a lot of clients are not paying attention to the expiration date of their passport. A lot of times, if they don't have a trip coming up, they don't look at their passport. I have a client who is going on an international trip next year. Her passport is going to expire two months after we travel. And we all know the rule is it has to expire at least six months from the date of return. You know, so I let her know, hey, you might want to go ahead and get your passport renewed, but she has plenty of times. Um, what I like to put at the top, it's just not here, is I like to put the client information. So I like at the top trying to get it to line up. Client name. So it gives me their full name. And then you put their address. And um, you want to put their phone number and stuff like that. Now, this is important here, preferred name, because, you know, some people have their birth name, the government name, but they like to be called something else. So you want to respect them and call them by whatever name they want to go by. Another thing that I've added, and I'm going to show you my other one. I've added a couple of other things to my report. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and X out of this. Now I'm going to restore this to default so you can see what it looks like from the base. So this is what it looks like from the base. Um, I did, as you can see there, it now says 1500 to 2500. I actually upped that because most of my trips actually cost more than that when I book with my clients. Um, I've changed that up. You know, these are just different things that they have and you can, you can alter all of these. So you can come in here and add or remove different things that you want to do or what you want to, what you want to show with your client. So what I'm going to go back is, and I'm going to show you what my actual form looks like. So I call it a trip request form. So this is what my trip request form looks like. I'm going to show you with the preview button. Um, this picture here, you can change. It doesn't really matter. That's just a preview picture. So I give them an introduction. I have their full name, first name, last name, preferred name, their full addresses. And if you see some of these things are asterisks, because the reason why you want this information is because say you're, for instance, you're doing cruises. Some cruises actually give discounts to people based off the states that they live in. And you want to make sure you have two ways to contact them, email and phone number. I've included birthday and wedding anniversary dates. Then I have the normal questions about what do you want to do with your trip, your code, how many rooms, any children, what's your budget, travel preferences, because I try to pick seats for my clients as well. I pick their seats on the plane if I can. Um, and then bed preferences, what type of beds do you want? So that way I know when I'm looking at my rooms, I know whether I should be looking at a king room or a two double or two queen bedroom. Um, meal preferences. Some people might be vegan, vegetarian. I like to add that to the trip. That way the hotel is aware that this person has some, um, some special needs when it comes to their food. Um, then some of this is just the basic information, but I also have in additional contact information. Now, all of this is basically, um, it's um, optional, but I do all this information just so I could get to know my clients a little more. Because if they put in job title and they said that they are the CEO of some, some, something, then we know the expectation is going to be much higher than maybe somebody who was just saying that they're a budget analyst. You know, this kind of lets you know who they are, what their kind of connections they could possibly have. Website. Just if they want to give me their business website, 
Greek association because I am Greek. I like to know if I'm working with other Greeks. And this is also a lot of this information is also good to use when you are sending your newsletters out. You can actually break it down to say, okay, I want to send something to everyone who has filled out the Greek association. Passport information. Again, full name as it appears on passport. I've had people put in their nicknames and play names, but if your full name, if, the, if whatever name you give me here is the name I'm gonna put on your on your paperwork. And if you're flying international and your passport does not match what is on your ticket, guess what? You're not going. So I need your full name uh, on your birthday on there. Um, the gender, I need to have um, the gender that you are legally, not the gender you choose to be, because again, everything has to match your IDs place of birth, all of that right there is basically passport information, terms and conditions, and then they can sign it online. And then that's basically the form. And until I get this form sent to me, I actually do not begin working on any trips just because there's no point in working on it if I don't have all the information. So this is basically the forms. Now there are tons of different forms that you can use that you can have. And one of the good things is, I wanna show you this too, but it go now. Well, one of the things that you can go ahead and do is you can embed the form. So if you have a website that you can alter and work with, you can embed the form. Or if you want, you can come in here and just copy just the form, make it a Bitly account, uh, and shorten it, link shorten it, and then save it on your phone. So when does someone does say, hey, I want to book this trip, I want to do this, yada, 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 you say, great, I'd love to help you. Please fill out this form so I can get started. And then you can just go ahead and send them the form. Now, when the forms come in, and someone fills it out, it shows up here. Now, if you have a form for a group, like for instance, I have several different groups, you can actually take those group, the, create a group form, attach it to there, and then once you do the exact same thing, but you'll do it inside the group, and that'd be a different training, and you can send the form out, and when they finish and fill out the form, it'll actually show up here. Now, the second way that you can send the form is just to create a, create a, um, a trip. So you go in there, you create a trip, you can change the photos to whatever you want. You're gonna put the traveler's information in. And if you don't have it in your system, you can just add it, just get their email and full name. And then you do more details, right? So once all of that is said and done and you create a trip, it's gonna open up to another page that's going to look, uh, I don't wanna open up anybody else's stuff, but it'll look like a plain form. And what'll happen is you'll be able to create a form and then it'll allow you to go back to the form that I showed you find your client inquiry, trip request, whatever you decide to call it, and then you can attach it and send it to them and it'll automatically fulfill and put everything inside of the inside of that trip. So inside of my trip, I'm actually able to I'm actually able to keep track of all of their trips, all of the communication, um, all of their forms, their invoices. I could put everything in that one little file folder. So it's like a digital file folder without necessarily having to have actual paper and I can use this anywhere. So guys, I hope that this was helpful. And if you look at the description, there's actually a um, a code that you can use to get um, to get Travel Joy for free, not for free, but you get Travel Joy for um, seven days. And with what it'll allow you to do is you get seven days for free to test it out. And then you'll get to have access for if you buy it for three months, but you get 50% off to try it out. So who wants to start out paying full price? Go ahead, use the code, test it out, use it. And then what I do is with my, as my clients go in and I create new trips, it also kind of works as a CRM for me. I'll be able to keep track of all of my, um, my different clients and stuff like that. And then I can actually take the same client and I can export it and put it inside of my newsletter, but that'll be for another training. So guys, hopefully this was um, something that was informative, gave you some information and taught you something new. And with that, I'm going to say, have a good day and enjoy the rest of your afternoon or morning or evening, depending on when you watched. Bye.